just looking. And you got to get everything, those little things up off the floor and all the stuff around. There's nobody there but me, but I still had to, you know, and I don't, I'm not even thinking about that when they are not there, but I had to try to get it child ready. And the little one, the one who's two and a half years old, uh, Nathan, he's named after his daddy. He comes in and he looks at the house, you know, the high ceilings and all that stuff. And he just smoking over everything, just over everything looking all on the floor. There's something in us, especially those male children, it's a, that DNA of explorer. And I watched, I just stood, Grandpa just stood and watched him. And I saw him, he was, out, he was still out in the hall, in the, in the uh, foyer of the house, you know, where you, where, you, where you, after you come in. He was still there. And of course, there was the steps, and he looked at them and smoked them over and looked up and down. And then he turned and looked at the walls, just looking up and down at the walls. And I, then I saw him go over. He didn't know I was watching him, but I was just looking at him. I said, let's see, what is he going to do? He went over and got to one of the walls and put it, both of his hands on it, on the wall, and tried to push it. I said, my God, no wonder the psalmist raised the question, what is man that you are mindful of him? Because even starting out in diapers or training britches, he's a something. He can be a something. You almost have to start trying to conquer them when they are just get here. Got to socialize him and get him in line. You grandparents know you have enjoyed these moments too, so let me not dwell on that. But the power of this story is that here is a father who loves God and loves his children. But he has, he realizes that the love of God and the love of children are not synonymous. You don't get them confused. Because our children are mortal. They are flesh and blood like we are. They will be here for a short time, only for a short time, just as we will only be here for a short time. But our God, our God, who sits high, looks low, made us, sustains us, knows all about us, knows our down sittings, our uprisings, our going outs, our coming ins. That God is the one we have to ultimately account to. And He will have the last word uh, in our lives. What happens when, what will, what will your faith as a father, what will, it, what will happen to your faith if what happens to you, what happened to Job happens to you? Would you still come to church? Hmm? Oh, I know it's easy to sing all these pretty songs the choir sings. When you, you don't have to sit where Job is now sitting in this text. That's easy to do. It's easy to do it when you got convenience and all of the things that go with convenience. But suppose you'd have had to walk here this morning. Would you have been here? Would you have been here this morning? Or would you have been somewhere that you could have walked to? I've been in third world countries where people come to hear preaching and come to hear worship and walk 10 and 20 miles one way just to get there and walk back in the heat and come rejoicing 
Go back rejoicing. It's easy to be a father when the marriage is good. And Pastor, I want to thank you for you and your, you and Mrs. Robinson this morning for the beautiful celebration. Thank you so much. It's a good model to the young generation, to your generation. Our, our young men need that model. Thank God for, I rejoice over Mr. Obama being in the White House and, <clears throat> and you rejoice. And, 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 and one of the things that's so beautiful about it to me is he's, he's showing the nation something that a, that a small group of black men have been doing for a long time. It's nothing new, but we just, the, the wrong pictures are presented to the public about us. But there are some of us who have loved our women since we were little boys. We loved that we were taught to love our sisters and love our mamas and love our grandmamas and to be decent and respectful in their presence. And we did it. And some of us took care of mama and took care of grandmama until they left this world. All of us haven't been Gorillas and Godzillas or whatever the media paints us to be. It's easy to worship when you got a good wife, when your children are doing well, when the stock market is up, and your wealth is increasing day by day. It's easy to worship. And I want to thank God that I, I have precious memories of the good times in marriage and good family and all of those things. I want to thank God for that because God gives that to us. It's easy to get up in the mornings when you've got a good wife. Amen. And when, ladies, when you've got a good husband, it's easy to get up in the mornings. Yes, it is. It's easy to get up in the mornings when you know your children are trying to do right. That's easy. It's easy to go and sing the songs of Zion and just, you know, rock and praise when it's going good. But what do you do? What do you do when life bombards you, knocks you down, all but out? What do you do? Look at what the text said Job did. This is not easy to do. It's not easy to get up when you've been knocked down like this. My God, you, you wish you had been knocked out to stay out. Because listen at the reports. You had all your wealth, your stock. What made you a wealthy man. One day fire fell from heaven. And burned it up. What do you got left? And you see the, 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 the part that makes it even more painful. And hard to explain is that when you hear the story up at the top when it starts it sounds like God is in on this thing you have to ask God whose side are you on because Job had really the devil had not really he had already passed Job by and said Ain't no need to fool with him. He's just so dedicated to the Lord and he's so on time with his worship and his praise and on time with his tithes and on time with his stewardship. There's no need to do this, to fool with Job because he has a blind loyalty to God. And the Lord said to Satan, the story says, hey, look, 
Have, have you checked him out? Have you checked out Job? You say you've been all up and down and through the earth seeking whom you may devour. Have you really checked the Job? He said, oh, I'm a fool with Job. Job, you got Job wrapped around your little finger. Whatever you say do, he will do because you have overprotected him. And I'm not fooling with him. But I tell you what, he said, I bet you I'm willing to wager with you. And God even entertains that. He said, I'm willing to wager with you if you take that hedge of protection out from around him and stop giving him all those goodies you give him. You even gave him seven sons. Now, seven sons in Job's day meant that you were some kind of man. Seven. Seven. Perfect. That meant that your lineage, your heritage couldn't help but go on. If one of them, if one of them was sterile, you had, you had six left. Seven boys who would carry on your name. Can't you see Job when he walked through the marketplace? He was envied by other men. He said he has seven boys. My God, what a man he is. He's a man among men. Seven boys. The devil said, you take that hedge off him around him. I'll fix him. When I get through with him, he'll curse you to your face. Yeah. You think they're going to church now because they're going to church now because you, you get them. They got good jobs and they, they can get good, good automobiles and keep the automobile fixed and they can wear good clothes. That's why they're going now. But you take that stuff away from them. You think they keep coming to Mount, uh, second Mount Vernon? Can't you hear him talking? Yeah, you can't buy them new shoes, ladies. You, will you keep coming? Can't, keep, can't get that new hat or new dress. Will you keep coming? Or are you just coming because you can get these things to show off? If that's all you're coming for, let me tell you, life is, life is so complex. It is so confusing. It's so realistic that there will come a day that you might have the new shoes, but something can happen to your health and your body. And you can't wear them. You can't put on that new dress. You can't even lift your arm. But thank God. If you got a faith that, can, that will allow you to get up, arise in the time of destruction when you've been knocked down to get back up, then you have a faith that has been tested in the fires of life and come out like gold. Get up! Tell your personal story. 20 something years ago, the Lord had blessed me and I watched Pastor Robinson and Mrs. Robinson this morning and my 